this has a lot of goodies done to it. It's a very, very reliable setup. He said he wants to line up with my Civic and a McLaren. <laughs> What's up boys? I hope you guys are doing really good. This is my 2008 Honda Civic Si. It has a lot of goodies to it and I want to let you guys know the entire model list to this car. This is not your typical A Gen Civic Si. This has a lot of goodies done to it. It's a very, very reliable setup. So let's go ahead and start from the front, moving all the way to the rear. So as we're looking at the front end, this is not the typical original A Gen Civic Si front bumper. This is a Mugen RR USDM front bumper. So this front bumper is plug and play. All you gotta do is remove your old bumper and you can literally plug this right in. You have the two bolts right here, two bolts, and then we have a bumper tab and you're good to go. So this bumper is pretty expensive. This is like a $500 bumper right about. And you could get this bumper from a shop in San Jose, California. It is called Basin R. So another thing I forgot to mention. The Mugen RR USDM does not come with the front lip. You have to buy that separately most of the time. This front lip is cost right about uh, probably like 70 bucks uh, shipped. The price is probably increased now, but um, yes, you could buy this front lip, the front bumper from eBay. And they also come with this light right here. It's a DRL light. I feel like that's a must, especially if you run this bumper. This bumper is very, very beautiful, especially at night with all the lights lighting up. Yes, make sure you get those lights, make sure you get that front lip, and you're all good. Everything is on eBay, or you get it from Basin R. Moving forward to the most important thing to this car, what's done to the engine? Is it a stock motor? Is it a built motor? Is it a K20? Is it a K24? And this motor right here is a stock K24. The reason why I stuck with a K24 rather than a K20Z3 that came with the 06 through 011 Civic Si is because the K24 is a much stronger engine. It's just the fact, especially when you're boosting this motor, basically bulletproof. So yeah, guys, this is a stock K24, not a K20Z3. Moving forward, a lot of people think that I'm actually turbocharged because this thing does sound like a turbo, but it's basically a turbo driven on a bill. So this is a centrifugal supercharger. So this supercharger kit is by Craftworks, and I've been rocking with them since a very, very long time. I really, really do appreciate the products that they put out. It's a very, very reliable supercharger kit. They have many products, so there is actually a supercharger unit that's mounted on the bottom and there's a supercharger unit mounted up top and there's custom supercharger kits that they have on the website. So definitely check them out. But another question that everyone asks me is what kind of pulleys am I running to push the power that I'm pushing right now? As you can see right there, I am pushing a 95 millimeter supercharger pulley. Now, do I recommend this to everyone? No, I don't recommend it. You may ask, why I don't recommend it to everyone is because I'm over spinning the supercharger unit a lot. The smaller supercharger pulley that you have, you know, the less revs that you are able to go to. So I'm putting a lot of stress on this unit and I'm kind of like playing the gamble, right? So I had this exact setup on my K20Z3 setup. And guess what? After a few pulls, this unit went bad. So it's just a gamble if you guys want to take it. Usually, most of the units are really, really good, but sometimes, you know, it's just hit or miss, guys. I don't want to, like, tell you guys, hey, run this 95 millimeter pulley, and then next thing you know, this unit's gone, and you got to pay, like, $2,500, right? It's not worth it. So, a supercharger pulley that I highly recommend is 105 millimeter supercharger pulley with a K24 crank pulley. That is like the best setup, very, very reliable. I had it on my sleeper build, and it was literally bulletproof. But if you're feeling bold and you got money in your pocket, run a 95 millimeter supercharger pulley with a rdx crank pulley so if you have a bigger crank pulley and a smaller supercharger pulley you make more boost this exact setup is 17 pounds at a red line i do not recommend you guys go anything below a 95 millimeter supercharger pulley 
that is basically asking for a lot of trouble and even running a 95 millimeter supercharger pulley you're already asking for a bit of trouble so it's just a gamble if you guys want to run this setup then by all means but you have a risk of overspinning this unit and potentially damaging the bearings and the shaft etc etc so i am running boomba motor mounts all around and i do have one hashboard transmission mount the car feels great guys um, it does have a lot of vibration but if you're planning to make power like this you kind of have to have some solid mounts so um, yeah guys if you want to run this setup make sure you're running solid mounts and if you are boosted i mean you do have to run these mounts what would happen if you have this exact same setup with stock motor mounts you're probably going to break the motor mounts right so um, yeah guys don't cheap out please prepare your car especially when you're going to boost it so let's go ahead and go over the fuel so this right here is the 2200 cc alpha injectors i do have a discount code if you guys are looking to save some money it is the boy with the honda so i have the 2200 cc alpha injectors we have the skunk 2 racing fuel rail and we do have a dutchworks uh, fuel return system as you can see right here so this fuel return system is necessary when pushing high horsepower right the car needs fuel, especially when you're on E85, um, especially when you're pushing high boost, you need fuel demand, right? So this fuel return system is plug and play from K-Series parts. And this kit, this entire fuel return system kit costs right about a thousand bucks with the fuel pump. So it is a DW400 uh, fuel pump as well. And I'll go over that in a little bit. So this car is still a work in progress, guys. Um, this is a max speeding rod catch can and the way that it's routed um, We're planning to put a little breather right here and we're planning to uh, mask this off and stuff like that So it is still a work in progress. But anyways, yes, this is a max speeding rod catch can you definitely need this when boosted So someone may ask how do you maintain a boosted car? Is it reliable? Can I daily drive it? Yes, you can. You could definitely daily drive this. I've been daily driving my sleeper build, a previous Kraftwerk kit car for many years, uh, probably like two years, and it was absolutely reliable as hell. It did use a little bit more fuel, but it's all good. Now, how do you maintain a boosted vehicle, specifically a Kraftwerk supercharged vehicle? All you have to do is make sure you change your oil at least every 1500 miles. Yes, it's really really low that's just what i do you don't have to do that you could do it every 3,000 miles but since i'm on e85 i change it like every 1500 miles it's like this guys would you want to be dogging your car and pushing your car on dirty oil of course not right so just make sure you clean it it's really cheap to change your oil it's like 35 40 bucks right so just change your oil and by the way i do run 5w40 castro fully synthetic i do not run 5w30 I run 5W40 and it's been working wonders. Comparing 5W30 to 5W40, the 5W40 is just a little bit thicker. That's about it, but it's been running phenomenally. So the supercharger fluid, I change every 10,000 miles. This is how it's supposed to look. You're supposed to check it when it's running. Anyways, I change this 10,000 miles and I change my spark plugs every 8,000 miles. That's all you have to do, guys. So. Um, I just take the extra precaution. I do it really, really soon. I change the motor oil every 1500 miles, supercharger fluid right about 10,000 miles, spark plugs right around 8,000 miles. And it's a very, very reliable car. Cooling system. You can run a stock radiator. You could run a stock thermostat. Is that something I recommend? Um, if you have the opportunity to upgrade, definitely do so. So this right here is a Mishimoto uh, radiator. I do not have Honda OEM fluid in here. I have distilled water and a little bit of Honda OEM radiator fluid, right? Coolant. Uh, the reason why I run distilled water in here is because the cars run much, much colder. If you're in an area that is really cold, I don't recommend putting distilled water. I recommend just putting coolant as the coolant won't freeze. Thermostat, I believe, is a Mishimoto racing thermostat. It just opens much more sooner and it cools down the car much quicker. The fans, I believe, is Mishimoto or Skunk 2, one or the other, but it does the job. These tires are Mickey Thompson ET Street R's. Uh, it is 225.50.15. As for the wheels, guys, I don't remember the brand. I bought it off Facebook such a long time ago and I didn't know the brand back then, but I just completely forgot it. So. 
Um, these wheels are cheap. They're not expensive at all. I assume you could get them brand new for like 300 bucks or 400 bucks or so. So definitely look, do some research and you'll be able to find them. Interior is very, very simple. I have a little boost gauge right here. Um, I have a weighted skunk to shift knob, which I love. Um, it is on a stock shifter. If I could pop this off. There you go. It is on a stock shifter. If I do want to upgrade, which I probably will, I'm probably going to go with the Cutie. The Cutie is a really, really good short shifter. So, uh, yeah, skunk to shift knob. I do have this little shift boot. I did wrap this back in 2017. So you can see all the suede is like fading and stuff. Even when I clean it, you know, it's just wear and tear. I got to get a new steering wheel. So transmission. I did mess up one of my previous transmission that came with this car when it was boosted. So I did replace it with a with another Civic Si transmission. It is still a HN Civic Si transmission, and this transmission was rebuilt with carbon synchros. So carbon synchros came in 09 to 011 transmission. So basically, it was rebuilt with the same synchros from the 09 to 011. So basically, the transmission is stock internals. Anyways, moving forward to the clutch, I do run a Action Clutch Stage 4 with a lightweight flywheel from them. I also have a discount code for anyone who's looking to buy Action Clutch. It is also the boy with the Honda. You can save yourself some money, but I've been running their clutch for a couple years now and I love it. This right here, this badge is from eBay. This is OEM. This is from eBay as well. Like I get a lot of good stuff from eBay, I ain't gonna lie. The interior is very, very clean. It's kept in really good condition, guys. Like I've owned this car since 2017, so seats look really, really good. Always carry a fire extinguisher because expect the unexpected. We got a carbon fiber gas cap. It does have a little bit of flaws, but it's all good. I bought this from Facebook. So moving forward to the wheels, I don't know the brand name to these wheels. Everyone asks me all the time. Everyone wants to ask me for the specs of it, but I just don't know. This is the only stamp it has on the wheels. If someone could just do their research, try to figure out what brand wheels these are, so I could just spread the knowledge to everyone, that would be awesome. But yeah, I just don't know the brand name. But honestly, I've been having these wheels from 2017 as well. I got these as a gift and these wheels have seen every single pothole up in california and they have yet to crack i mean i guaranteed if i go ahead and paint these wheels like a nice ass color like powder coat them really good like they're gonna look like t37 so we're gonna go ahead and move to the rear and we have this beautiful exhaust right here this exhaust is discontinued it is a vibrant capback exhaust I got this exhaust for like 60 bucks from an old guy because his wife was complaining about how it was so loud. So I got this back in the day, like in 2018 and I came up, I paid like 60 bucks for it. There's three reasons why this car sounds so unique. One, it's obviously because of the supercharger kit. Two, it's because of the header I'm running and three, the catback exhaust that I'm running. So the header that I'm running is not your typical Skunk 2 racing header. It is from NVIDIA. I forgot to mention the fuel pump that I'm also running is called Dutchworks DW400 fuel pump. It comes with the fuel return system. But I am running Tain coilovers. Do I recommend Tain coilovers? No, but it's a good starter, right? So if I were you, I would definitely save some more money and just buy some BC racing coilovers. Uh, Tain is kind of like the bottom of the barrel. It's just a good starter point. But uh, if you're pushing power like this, I mean, yeah, it does a job, but go with BC Racing or something. Also, guys, from factory, the Crawford kit does not sound really loud. The reason why right now it sounds really loud is because it has a upgraded blow -off valve. So the blow -off valve does have a T on it. So it's either a teal blow -off valve or a turbo smart blow -off valve. I don't remember. It was just such a long time ago where I purchased it. So it's just one or the other. Do some research and just pull the trigger on one. But just to FYI guys, it is really, really loud and it does get annoying at times. So once you get all this stuff installed, make sure you guys buy a Honda Flash Pro or a K tuner. That is mandatory. You definitely need a tuning system to tune this vehicle. It will not run on a stock tune. So you need Honda Flash Pro or K-Tuner. I recommend Honda Flash Pro and make sure you guys find a reputable tuner. A reputable tuner that I highly recommend is someone named Yash Tune. He's been tuning my vehicles for many years now. He does a great job. 
especially when tuning Kraftwerk vehicles. He definitely knows how to tune these really well. And there's a lot of stories where people say you can't bounce a limiter off of Kraftwerk's vehicles because you know the shaft could break on the supercharging unit. Yash Tune does something to the tune where it's a soft bounce instead of a hard bounce, if that makes sense. So uh, he does a lot of great stuff. He did a great job in tuning overall. But yeah, guys, this car is very, very simple. There's not a lot of major things that's done to it. It is a stock motor, stock tranny, just a supercharger kit on a smaller pulley and a bigger crank pulley. Any more questions regarding the car, please leave a comment below and I'll happily get back to you. So I'm currently at my boy shop and he said he wants to line up with my Civic and a McLaren. So <laughs> I'm going to get smoked, but it's going to be a nice little matchup, right? I mean. Win or lose is just all for fun.